A very good morning to all of you. Everyone, please switch on your videos. Yes, everyone, please switch on your videos. Yeah, so is my voice audible to all of you? And uh, can you see the presentation? Just let me know so that I can begin. Yes, ma'am. All right, OK. So in the last lecture, we are discussing about the eye lens induction and how the eye lens induction is going on and the different features and everything. So we have come across the human eye anatomy, how the human eye's structure or the eyeball is being like completely curated and what are the different features in case of the human eye. Like we have seen that in the human eye, light is being completely attached or attracted towards this cornea part then it will be going to move towards the lens part, then moving towards the retina part. And from this retina, it will be going to showcase some signals towards the brain and the neurons so that it can understand what actually the image is. And it will be going to identify what actually the thing is that the eye want to visualize. OK, so these are the things which we have studied in the last lecture. Moving forward. We have uh, to discuss some terms related to this islands induction. Basically, what are the terms? What are the features? What are the specific things which are there? So we will be going to have some discussion over that. OK, so first thing is the most important thing to understand and to study in this case is to understand three important terminologies Okay, to completely understand the islands induction. It is very important to understand three very much important terminologies. Now, what are these terminologies? So the first terminology or the first term, which is being important and which is showcasing much more importance in case of the island's induction is called as the inducer. So how the inducer is going to work and how the inducer is going to perform. So basically, the initial work of the inducer, and we could say the actual work of the inducer is to showcase or is to give some sort of signals. Okay, what is it is going to do? It will be going to give some signals to the other cells or to the other different things so that the cells are able to change their entire behavior or morphology. Now, what are the different changes? which can occur with the help of this inducer. So the changes could have been there is change in the fate. Okay, actual mechanism, what the cell wants to become could be changed. The change in fate is there, uh, like of the cell actually. Uh, and also the cell division is going to be changed. The capacity of the cell to carry out the cell division is going to be changing. And also the shape of the change, uh, sorry, the shape of, uh, shape of the cells could be changed. And also there is a change in the migration things and all these changes, like changes in the entire cellular behavior of the other tissues of the other cells is being carried out with the help of the signals that is being uh, like redu um, that is being produced from these inducers that is being released from these inducers. So inducer is basically a component or a thing which is going to give some signals okay, to the other cells or to other tissues to induce something, to form something. Okay? Inducer is nothing but it is carrying out some uh, formation or induction procedure in the other cells or the other tissue systems. Now, uh, like through their complete local acting signals, these uh, cells, that is the inducers, these could be a single cell or could have been a group of cells which are carrying out all these processes and all these things. So inducer is very much essential and very much important to carry out all these processes, to carry out all these uh, things like the changes in the behavior in the entire cell, and the changes in the complete cell behavior of the other cell system, their morphological changes, their changes in the entire cell migration system, cell division, all these things, all these changes are being carried out with the help of the inducer itself. So inducer is very important. And the other thing, okay, this is the first component, like for the complete inductive interaction, the first component is an inducer who is going to showcase or give some signals. Okay. 
अब द सेकेंड कंपोनेंट एंड द सेकेंड थिंग विच इज इम्पॉर्टेंट इन दिस इंटायर सिस्टम इज द रिस्पॉन्डर ओके सो रिस्पॉन्डर आर नथिंग बट द सेल्स विच आर हैविंग सिग्नल ट्रांसडक्शन कंपोनेंट एंड दे आर हैविंग द एबिलिटी टू रिसीव द सिग्नल्स ओके द सिग्नल्स विच आर बींग इंड्यूस्ड और रिलीज फ्रॉम दीज सेल्स और फ्रॉम दीज इंड्यूसर्स the responders are having the ability to receive those signals all right and it is not necessarily that all the tissues which are present in any sort of the organism or any sort of the organ which is carrying out this entire procedure which is going through this entire uh, induction procedures and all of these things are uh, necessarily to have the complete ability to respond to all these signals okay so not every cell is having the ability to respond to the signal but the inducers or the uh, like the responders are showcasing the ability to respond to the signal received with the help of the inducer and yeah again important thing is that not every tissues or not every cells are having the ability to respond to the signals received or released from these inducers okay so the entire cells which are present in the complete cellular mechanism of any sort of organ not necessarily that they are showcasing the ability to receive the signals from the inducer but there are cells which are acting as a responder all right so the thing here is important uh, like these two components are very much important firstly the inducer is going to released out some signals the uh, signals will be going to change the entire behavior of the other cell or the other tissue where the signals are being attracted or where the signals are being attached and the uh, cell which is going or the tissue which is going to like completely accept the signals and which is going to react to the signals and entirely receive the signals which are being um, like which are uh, being released from these inducers are the responders who are going to completely uh, showcasing the ability to receive the signals with some receptors and they are having the ability to accept the signals which are being released from the inducer so responder is nothing but the tissue which are actually accepting the signals which are being released from the inducer and yeah again important thing not every cell is having the ability to respond to the signals so that is also very important thing so the responders will be having the capacity to give the response okay so what is the responder's function and what is the responder is going to do so the responder is showcasing the ability to give response okay so i think is that uh, inducer is there okay and another thing is that the um, receiver is there okay responder is there now not we have said that not every cell is having the ability to respond to the things okay but the cells and the complete systems which are having the capacity to give response to particular signals which are reacting with those particular signals and showcasing the ability for specific signals which are being released from the inducer accepted by the responder and then again showcasing the ability to carry out these responses in a much more higher way and showcasing the ability to accept these complete things is called as competency okay so the cells which are showcasing the ability to accept the response from the receiver uh, from the inducers are the competent cells they are competent to carry out the ability to respond certain things so what is actually competency now these two that is the inducer and the responder are the components okay and competency we could call it in a broad sense like a process or a phenomenon okay which is going to happen with these two things inducer and the responder now to make it very easy for your understanding let me just give you an example let me just give you an example that is can you please tell me you are uh, studying in your bsc biotechnology second okay so if i'll give you a question paper for your ca finals 
like a CA final question paper if I am going, going to give you. And if I tell you that you need to score at least 90% marks in this paper, will it be possible for you to showcase uh, that much like feasibility to write the question paper if in case you are having the ability to write it down, okay? But will it be possible for you to get those 90% marks in CA finals examination? Okay. What are the rest of the people going to think? Yes, students? What do you think? Will it be possible for you people or not? Then why it is not possible for you people to write the answers related to the CA finals? Let me tell you why. Because you are not at all competent with the complete syllabus of CA examinations. Okay, so here you are competing with the writing the examinations and writing the things related to biology because you are science students, you have not at all studied commerce in your 11th and 12th and also you are going to like you have completed your first year and now you are studying your second year so you are having the ability and in a more broad sense or in a more proper sense you are having the competency to write the papers related to the biotechnology and related to the things which are important in case of biotechnology as well as which are important in your biotechnology like second year study so the question is following that um, you are studying in your second year, right? Biotechnology second year. The question was very simple. So is it possible for you to write the CA finals examination right now? Have you understand it now? Yes, have you got it now? So is it possible for you or not? No, it is not possible for you because you are not at all competent to write the examination related to the CA paper because you are students of science faculty in that you are studying the biotechnology field and in that you are studying in your second year biotechnology. So you are competent for the subjects related to this particular stream. You are competent to the subjects related to the science faculty. Okay. You are not at all having the competency to write the papers and to write the things related to the CA examination because that is of total non-competent things for you. So here, competency is just the ability to respond to the signals which are being released from the end user. Okay, it is the ability to respond to these things like these signals, ability, uh, like the cells which are having the ability to respond to these signals which are being released from the inducers. And the cells which are unable or which don't have the ability to carry out the response and to perform the response in case of uh, these uh, like induction system and all of these are known as non-competent cells and the property is non-competency. Is that clear to all of you? These three terms. Yes, is that clear to everybody? Yes, ma'am. Yes, everyone, is that clear to you? Because that's very important. After understanding all these things only, you will be going to understand the rest of the things related to islands inductions. So everyone, have you understand it or shall I repeat it again? Okay, so everyone has written a yes, so we will be going to move forward. Okay. So we have seen three terms. Again, I will short explain in just a single word. So inducer is nothing but the cells which are inducing the signals or giving the signals, okay, producing some sort of signals. Responder is the cell which is having the ability to receive those signals. Okay, so these two are components. The third one is competency. That is the ability to respond to specific sort of the signals and non-competency is the inability to respond to some specific sort of the signals. 
so these three things are very much important for your uh, study purpose related to all these uh, things and all these phenomena okay so yeah and one more thing in the islands induction the initial inducer or the initial component in the inducer is the optic vesicle okay so there is a optic vesicle which is being present in the complete islands induction thing and that is going to work in as the initial inducer so that is very important write it down in your books that optic vesicle the name is given here in this image optic vesicle so this optic vesicle is a very much important thing and it is acting or working as a inducer in carrying out the functions and all the processes related to the islands induction so the presence of optic vesicle is of very much importance and the optic vesicle is actually the initiator of islands induction it is going to be the beginning point or the initial point from which the islands induction is going to be starting off so what is the important thing here in this case the important thing here in this case is the optic vesicle which is going to be working out as a initiator or the initial completely inductor okay it is the inducer in case of all these things so what are these optic vesicles are going to be doing so here the optic vesicles are performing the work of releasing various different types of signals there are a lot of signals which are being released which are being totally uh, like released from these optic vesicles the signals are paracrine signals and these signals are being utilized Uh, with the help of the head ectoderm with different types of organisms they are utilizing these signals which are being released by the optic vesicle and the signal which is of very much importance is the <coughs> ax 6 g okay so the signal which is being released from the optic vesicle and which is having a lot of different importances in case of the islands induction is called as pax 6g okay so there are also a lot of different sort of or a lot of different types of um genes which are there but for your understanding and for this particular level of your study pax 6 gene is the gene which is showcasing a lot of importance in case of islands induction so what are the different things related to that now we will have a look on that okay 